Hey everybody, Craig here from Sweetwater. Welcome to the second of a four-part series on how to buy a bass you'll love. We're gonna demystify the quest for tone, get back to basics, and most importantly, help you find what matters most to you. I'm a bassist, recording artist, and luthier with 15 years in the industry, and I'm here to help discover what makes the biggest impact for you when looking for a new bass, whether it's your first axe or you're finding that next instrument to round out your low-end arsenal. This series isn't about who plays what or when you need this bass. It's about helping you decide what makes the biggest tonal difference to you. In this episode, we're diving deeper into the sound and feel of your instrument. These are the voice of your instrument and are responsible for a large part of the sound and feel of your bass. That's right, we're talking about strings. This is going to be an overview of some of the main types of strings. If you want to go even deeper, check out this video on string gauges by my friend and fellow bass lord, Kevin Spundy. Starting off, round wounds. These are your standard strings to find on just about any bass. These tend to have the most high-end bite and are great for things like slapping, tapping, and using effects for aggressive, overdriven tones. The material these are wound with can have an impact on the sound these produce as well. Two of the most common are nickel and stainless steel. Nickel being the more mellow of the two and stainless steel being the more aggressive sounding. One thing to consider when choosing nickel wound or stainless steel wound strings is that stainless steel is much harder than nickel and it'll wear out nickel frets more quickly. If you want to get the sound of stainless steel wound strings, you should probably consider a bass with stainless steel frets, which are more durable. If aggressively grindy tones aren't your style, maybe flat wounds are more your speed. These strings are the epitome of mellow thump. If you're looking for a classic Motown sound or really want to hold down the bottom end, these might be for you. They're super smooth to play on and have next to no finger noise because of the flat surface. Flats paired with a P-style bass really come together for something magical. Check out the video on pickups in this series to hear the differences between pickup styles if you haven't already. Lastly, tape wounds are literally wrapped in nylon tape for the ultimate in thump and a silky smooth feel. These have a very loyal following and are great for getting a mellow, thumpy, McCartney style tone. Now let's talk about scale length and string tension. These two are closely related to the strings and factor into the way a bass feels and plays as well as sounds to a degree. Generally speaking, basses come in three buckets for scale length, 34 inches standard, 35 being long scale, and anything less than 34 being considered medium or short scale. By the way, you know what we're talking about when we talk about scale length, right? Of course, that's the distance between the nut and the bridge saddles, but I'm sure you already knew that. So we're talking about the distance these strings have to stretch over the guitar. The longer the distance, the higher the tension, and vice versa. These can have a fairly dramatic impact on the sound. Check out some of the playing examples to hear some of the differences. Having higher string tension means that you can get the action lower before reaching fret buzz, and that can be great for really heavy players who need something that they can really dig into. You'll see a 35 inch scale length commonly used on five string basses to get the low B string to speak cleanly. Lower string tension will result in the opposite, you won't have to pluck as hard to get a sound, and the strings will have a very different feel. This also results in some of the harmonics of the string organizing differently as it vibrates, and this is a huge contributing factor in the notion that short scale basses can sound bassier when recording. 34 inch scale is the standard for full size basses, going all the way back to the first Fender Electrics. Thanks, Leo. These strike a great balance and are what you'll find on most of the basses on the market. We'll go further in depth on the factors that contribute to the way a bass feels in the last video in this series. Okay, critical listening time. Just like in the last video, I'm gonna play the same example on every bass so you can hear the differences. Drop me a line in the comments as to what makes the biggest difference in sound and what you like the best. Pay special attention to how much you hear my fingers on the strings and how much grind and punch you hear in each example. Which sound fits with what you hear in your head when you think of your bass tone? And remember, nobody else has your ears. What makes the biggest difference to you?
Yet again, base friends, we've reached the critical moment of the show where I ask, what made the biggest difference to you? Which string sounded closest to that bass tone you hear in your head haunting you as you're trying to fall asleep the night before the gig? If you're just finding your way to this series, welcome. Don't forget to check out our previous video on pickups and the rest of the videos in this series. If you like this video and have some other ideas for bass content here on the channel, drop me a line in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, start at Sweetwater for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.